Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. The please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And thank you for listening. So this is going to be a short recording and it's going to be an exercise that you can do. And I'll do it with you. And it's basically a stress reduction exercise. It's a little bit of visualization, but it's, I suppose it's more getting in touch with how you're feeling in a specific part, which will be your hands. So... First of all, I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes. Before you close your eyes, I'd like you to ideally sit in a chair that supports your body. So even though this is not a sleep recording, just in the event that you did fall asleep, I want to make sure that you don't fall out of the chair. So only sit in a chair that you could fall asleep in safely. Okay. And secondly... I suppose the only other thing is if you you could do this standing up because you know you're not going to fall asleep standing up but I would suggest sitting in a chair ideally not everybody feels comfortable standing up with their eyes closed um I'm okay with it a little bit but it's not not the most comfortable thing to do I don't think I suppose we have our eyes closed, don't we, when we're walking so we don't bang into things. So this exercise really is simple. It's you put your hands together and you kind of make a fist, but you're not gripping. You're just, you're kind of wrapping your fingers around each other. So as if you were holding something in between both of the hands but you're not gripping your fingers. You're not using any pressure or any any muscle power or anything like that. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I'm going to do it where my hands, you know, are up. They're kind of at chest height out in front of my body. Now, I know that not everybody listening to this may be able to do that particular way of doing it due to uh, physical issues, maybe injury or uh, chronic pain issues or something sort of in the shoulders or neck or whatever. So it's about what I would suggest you do. If you can, sit at a table and just rest your hands on the table. Okay, so it's hard for me in this kind of situation to cover every single aspect that could be possibly out there because there's going to be people out there just only got one arm. So I realized that you can't, you can still do this if you've only got one arm. You just, you just use one hand. And what I would say is you put your hand either in front of you with the um, palm face it up or you can rest it on maybe on your knee with that the, the palm facing up or on a table it's about adapting it for your own personal needs but I can't cover every single possibility because there's too many and it would not be a short recording then but you know please be aware that I am conscious that not everybody has the same physical uh, ability as everyone else. Ability, maybe not the right word, but the physical... Like I've got an injured shoulder. My right shoulder, I have chronic pain in it. And it needs an operation. But it's, it's sometimes it's okay, sometimes it really isn't. And I've also got lower back pain chronic pain. So the reason I'm telling you this is not because I want you to feel sorry for me, although you can if you want, I don't mind, is, you know, if you want to send get well, (laughs) 
get will cards to me, that's fine. Just include money. The point is that everybody's got something, very likely. A lot of young people may not have any physical issues at all. Some older people might not. But a lot of people do. So what I want to really get across is that you can do this. You can do any of my, well hopefully most of my exercises that I come up with, regardless of what your situation is, if you want to do it. And that's, that's the only thing that's going to stop you is whether or not you want to do it or not. You don't have to, you know, it's up to you. There are other ways of reducing stress and anxiety. And I try to, I try to present different ways of doing it. You know, so sometimes it's a long recording of me just talking softly and doing hypnosis, maybe with background music. Um, sometimes it's me talking about a subject where your perspective may change, your the way you feel may change, uh, your outlook. You might see things just a little bit differently, and that can be that can make a huge difference in how you feel. Or an exercise which could be quite a short exercise, quite simple has to be. If I'm think if I'm going to give it to you, not give it to you, but if I'm going to talk about it, it has to be simple. I don't really do complicated. So, which is it's a good thing. So adapt it to how you want to adapt it. There is no wrong way of doing this. I suppose the only wrong way of doing this is if you're like jumping up and down, um, playing cymbals or playing the drum set. I mean, that's probably not the way to do this, but generally, you know, you just adapt it to your own way. So I'm going to do it sitting down. I'm not going to... I could rest one hand on my knee, but I can't rest both of the hands because it'd have to be in the middle of my knees and that actually does hurt my shoulder. So I'm going to hold my hands at kind of chest level, but my arms, my upper arms and my shoulders are kind of pressing together against my body. So it's not, I'm not using any energy really. And my hands are very loose. They're not clutching, they're not gripping. Okay, I'll move on from that. Now, all I want you to do is focus on your hands. That gap inside your hands, which is big enough probably to hold a tennis ball, maybe a golf ball. You know, it doesn't really matter what size it is, but it's old enough. You could, you could hold something in there. There's a gap. I mean, I'm sure if you gripped it, you could probably hold water in there. But we're not gripping anything. We're just having our hands together gently. But you know that if there was something there, it'd be pressed against either palm, and it would stay in your hands. Maybe it was an egg. You know, that kind of size thing. And of course, you wouldn't want to be pressing on an egg. So just allow it to be there. Just allow that space in between your hands to be there. And notice that your fingers are relaxed. Your hands are relaxed. And you're not putting any pressure at all. Because the last thing that we want to do here is create tension. I mean, that's, that's the, the opposite. Although we do focus on stress, but it's in a positive way to reduce it, to relieve it, to move that stress to maybe a different part of your body. In this case, moving it to the insides of your hands, that empty space, not your hands themselves, but the empty space inside your hands. And then you can feel it pressing against your palms. And because of all those nerve endings in your palms, it's a very sensitive area. One of the most sensitive areas of your body. And your palms of your hands, the palms of your feet, uh, I guess sort of underneath your armpits. Those places that are very sensitive, they're 
especially with your hands. It's you, We choose what touches our palms, don't we? We're in control of that. And when we walk, we have shoes on, socks, slippers, whatever it may be, to protect our feet. Because you really feel it if you walk around a garden or on a beach without any shoe in, any shoe in, any kind of protection on your feet. You can feel how sensitive your feet really are. Sometimes it feels lovely, especially if it's you know, soft sand. But uh, in the case of your palms, right now, as the stress from your body moves from wherever it is, whether it's in your brain, whether it's in your neck, your shoulders, your chest, your back, your legs, your hips, your feet, it just all starts to just move up or down towards your hands. So if it's in your feet or in your legs, it's moving up, all the way up, and maybe gaining momentum as it then collects with the tension from your stomach, from your groin, from your buttocks, your hips, your chest, moving up to your shoulders, and then maybe gaining momentum also with the tension and stress that's been relieved from your scalp, from your forehead, your eyes, your jaw, your tongue, your mouth, your neck, the back of your neck, the top of your back, and your shoulders, of course, as that tension moves down and you can feel the energy but you don't necessarily feel the tension itself because it's moving it's not in order for tension I think to really be felt in a negative way it needs to be kind of stuck because I think that's when tension does cause problems when it's stuck when it's not moving when it's stationary when it's almost abandoned and it can't move and it just it starts to moan and it starts to get agitated and it wants your attention. Well, this attention that you're giving it allows the stress to move, flow comfortably. Again, now down from your shoulders, down your arms your wrists, and then into your hands and out of your hands, into the middle of your hands. And I just noticed that I'm pulling my hands apart a little bit. They're still touching. But I can feel a coolness in the middle of my hands, which wasn't there before, so this is a bit, a bit strange. And... I could feel an energy, there's an energy there that wasn't there before. And that tension that was in your body and in your mind and your brain all again can continue to flow down. Anything that's left, any bits of tension or stress that maybe you weren't aware of before still continue to flow up to your shoulders or down to your shoulders from your head and then to your arms through your wrists into your hands and then join in that I guess a ball of energy just a ball of energy and just let it grow in my one, it's, it feels like almost like it's spinning, but just gently, you know, it's like it's actually I realize it's really it's hovering. It's still in my in the palms of my hand, but I can feel that it's actually really light and it's I thought it would be heavy, but it's not. It's really light. 
in fact, it's completely like this I can't really feel it in my hands anymore. I can feel that it's there, but the tension's now just left. The stress has left my hands, and it's all in that, like a, a bubble or a ball of energy. And now I'm going to pull my hands apart so you can do that yourself. And you can just see this ball or this bubble. And it just, it's there in the, in the air. And it just starts to float away. It's completely light. And all along, it didn't want to be in your body. It wanted attention because it wanted to be out of your body. It didn't want to be in there. That wasn't where it lives. That's why it was rattling the cages to get your attention because that stress and anxiety felt like a prisoner in your body. It didn't want to be there. And my, my palms are facing upwards now, apart. And I can feel this energy rising from my palms. And as I'm talking about the energy, the uh, stress and the tension, not wanting to be in your body, I'm feeling almost like there's something rising out of my palms. Just, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like invisible flames just rising out of my hands just a release a real release and it's still happening it's very strange it's the idea that the stress and anxiety didn't want to be inside you it felt like it was a prisoner and it was rattling those bars and making noise, trying to get your attention because it wanted to be freed, yet you weren't the person that put it in there to start with. So there was that conflict. It's almost, it feels like the, the stress and the anxiety is coming to terms with the reality that it was never a prisoner. It was never it was never stuck in you. It could leave and come as it wanted. It didn't have to be angry. It didn't have to uh, cause you stress and to feel ill because it was trying to get your attention. There was always a door open through your palms always available for it to come and go but in a different way it realised it could have left at any time it's almost almost laughing at itself in a way like oh we could have left at any time we just didn't realise it's a little bit like being in a you feel like you're locked in a room and you keep trying to open it. You can't open it from, you push the door, you pull the door, you can't open it. You realise it's a sliding door. But you didn't know. That feels nice. I feel really calm in my brain actually right now, in my mind, there's a real calmness. Now I'm just going to rub my hands together. And wiggle my fingers. You don't have to wiggle your fingers, but you can if you want. And you can open your eyes. Just notice how you feel. 
that brings us to the end of this recording. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. And you could listen to this recording every day for the next 30 days. Redoing the exercise. If you choose. And maybe let me know how you get on. Take care. Lots of love. Bye.